used for menopause. And all those herbs, uh, same herbs I mentioned before, used for hot flashes. But once we reconstitute the system and get it back on a he healthy level, then we don't have to worry about this anymore. We get away from eating the synthetic foods, the processed foods, the waste. Because this waste gets in the muscles, the muscles lose their flexibility, and then we get into a condition known as a prolapsed uterus. That's when the uterus no longer has enough strength in the muscles that suspend it, hold it in place. We have two in the front that attach to the pubic symphysis bone, two that attach in the back to your spinal column, as you call it, your vertebrae, and we have the two on the side that keep the uterus in position because the uterus has an orbit, it moves about. But when these muscles get full of waste, they can't move like they should, and the uterus starts slipping down. It starts slipping down. This was a condition during slavery, just as uh, ulcers and stress-related diseases occurred during slavery as well, which we think all of these things are rather new. Eventually, the uterus falls right out of the vagina because of the waste out of, due to the diet or the waste that, it, that is injected to it by the uh, acid waste in the man's sperm from eating junk food, alcohol, acidic acid, and all sorts of things that are not food. Sometimes you get in between bleeding, mid-period bleeding. Sometimes it's due to an ovarian cyst. This is normal to have that cyst. That's the blood that's lost when the egg comes out of its, out of the ovary. That's a little bit of blood. And you have some blood that's lost when the, when the egg is not fertilized, which is about three drops of blood at the most. That is called classical menstruation. That is menstruation. One, three drops of blood. That's menstruation, but that's classical menstruation. We have Marden menstruation, which is a combination of hemorrhaging. That's when the endometrial tissue inside the uterus itself loses stability and begins to deteriorate and burst and bleed. And that's what people call menstruation, but that is hemorrhaging. There's a difference between classical menstruation and hemorrhaging, but we lump them all together, but that is not so. Once the diet is changed, then the menstruation or bleeding part of the cycle decreases. A young lady who is bleeding, say uh, menstruating as you call it, between five and seven days is heading toward a cyst or tumor, guaranteed. Especially when they're 12 and 13 and 14 with a period that long, they're heading toward cysts and tumors. If, they, if the lady has this cramps and all these signs and symptoms going on that I showed you earlier where the pain is referring in the pelvic girdle, referring up to the, the muscles in the neck which related to the lower system, the reproductive system. You get pain in other areas of the body related to the reproductive system. Getting all this referred pain at 13 and 14 and 15, that's the signs and symptoms of a cyst or tumor on its way. The diet alone can indicate that. Red meat especially, dairy products, alcohol, on that kind of diet, eating junk food, hitting into a, a fibroid tumor or cyst. That's why close to 70% of African women have fibroids. It's not a diet for us. We're eating out of our nature into someone else's nature and we pay the cost of it. That's why 50% of the African men have prostate disease. You've heard of them, Sidney Poitier, Minister Farrakhan, uh, Barry, and it goes on and on, Mayor Barry of Washington, D.C. It's an endless list, and you wonder what's going on. It's because we're eating out of our nature. We have to go back to eating in nature, with nature, natural foods, raw foods, steamed fruits, vegetables. And then we won't have these kind of illnesses going on. I just want to show you a picture of the herbs and the, how they look. Excuse me. This is how medicine looks. Looks pretty. Looks pretty enough to eat. All these are herbs used to treat the reproductive system of the female, of women. We have birth fruit. We have blue cohosh. We have witch hazel, shepherd purse. They use that a lot for uh, 
bleeding, hemorrhaging, too much bleeding, I use shepherd's purse. And then we have licorice, which is used as an estrogen stimulator. Uh, then we have down at the bottom here, black cohosh. They look pretty. And these are the natural medicine. These are the medicines we want to get back to in order to restore the uterus so we won't get into these fibroid kind of conditions, these um, adhesions where the tissue loses its constitution and starts, the collagen starts gluing the fallopian tubes and the ovaries together. And we call these adhesions. Again, I'm going to show you a disease condition here. Let me raise this up here so you can see it. You can see the fibroid is inside and bulging out. You see another fibroid, which here is blocking the fallopian tube. You see a blocked fallopian tube here with adhesions. The tissue is beginning to grow together. These strings that you see here are uh, tissues that are connecting organs together that don't belong together. That's a symptom of a vitamin C deficiency, which means the African is not getting outside enough. It has a sunlight deficiency, which is not stimulating enough vitamin D, which causes the body to retain vitamin C, which reduces the amount of acid in the system. So this person has a sunlight deficiency and a melanin deficiency, aside from eating junk. Now we're getting into adhesions. And then we're getting into scarring. Remember vinegar, acidic acid causes scarring. If you get a temperature, then the tissue breaks, and then when it heals, it causes what you call a scab, then the scab forms a little uh, uh, kind of growth piece of tissue there. That's what we call that a scar inside of the body. In that little area, like if you got cut with a knife and then it heals, you can always point, I got cut with a knife there, you can always point to it. That's what we call scarring when it occurs inside the body. And that causes that area of the tissue to lose its flexibility, lose its ability to carry electrical impulse, a charge. And so it can't carry information. So it blocks information from being received to the healthy tissue. But all this is caused by those synthetic dishes, the tampons that had bleach in it and so many chemicals in it that if you ate one of them, it would make you sick. I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm saying that all these things that we're not considering, aside from the, the deodorants, the antiprespirants, the diet, the anti-melanin chemicals, such as aspirin, Tylenol, Prozac, all of these things add up to the destruction of the reproductive system of the black woman, attack on the womb deterioration of the prostate. And we walk around wondering what's happening. When we're actually killing ourselves in a very tasty way. And then we won't have to subject the ladies, we won't have to be subjected to these kind of examinations. This is when the finger's inserted into the vagina in order to palpate it, to feel for a lump or sore or hardness. You can palpate the uh, fallopian tubes and ovaries and feel whether they are too stiff or inflexible or some kind of bonding adhesion is occurring. The lady is put on her back, her feet are put into a stirrups like an animal, and she's examined by a, usually a doctor who knows nothing about rhythm, remembering that the African system is very rhythmic because of the melanin, the high amount of melanin, the high amount of rhythmicity. So the lady is subjected to a whole lot of treatment like this and examined by someone who doesn't understand rhythm, can't even dance. Examined in a very rhythmic system. This has a solar cycle, a lunar cycle, a celestial cycle. All these different rhythms are going. A 20-day rhythm, a 28-day rhythm, a 33-day rhythm, all these different cycles or frequencies as we call it. In chemistry, we call it the orbit. Like you say, the Earth orbits around the sun. We don't call that an orbit. In, in chemistry, we call that a frequency. I'm switching languages, but what you know is still the basics of what I'm saying. But in science, we switch the language to make you ignorant, so you have to come to me, you see, so I can keep myself in business. And I'm trying to empower you so you know that you understand this. You understand it precisely. You understand if you eat something that's not natural, it's going to make you not natural. I know that we all have to deal with this one little character here that I mentioned before, this character called an eating disorder. Because we try to change our diet, then we get in, into these junk foods. We try to change our diet and stay on the straight and narrow. And we get into the herbs and the vitamins and minerals. 
and we never treat the addiction, the eating disorder, so we slip. We slip back because we never treated the eating disorder. Eating disorder is a nice way of saying mental illness. You've got to be out of your mind to eat all the time. Just as someone's got to be out of their mind to drink all the time. You've got to be out of your mind to smoke all the time. You're out of your mind and in somebody else's mind, which means you're into someone else's nature. It's natural for those people, but it's not natural for us. So we have to treat the eating disorder. We treat that with herbs, chickweed. It's good. Red clover is good. Astrologous are good. These are herbs that are used for eating disorders, especially the chickweed and bilberry, which is good for sugar diabetes or sugar cravings. So we use the chickweed and the bilberry. Those are the herbs. The, the amino acids are used for the eating disorders, phenylalanine and glutamine. Those are good for cravings. Those are the amino